Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Sasha Lesson, and I'd like to uh, tell you about one of my ancestors, Abraham, and some of his so-called chosen people. He first comes on to uh, the ancient historical record, Abraham does, when Yahweh, who was known in those days as Enlil, head of the Anunnaki gold mining expedition to Earth, chose Abram. He gave him a better name, called him Abraham, uh, and to be top general of his army. Abraham was the son of um, one of Yahweh's Anunnaki earthling priests named Terah, whom Yahweh sent to uh, Ur to make sure that his uh, Yahweh's son Nanar was behaving himself and not uh, being uh, trying to overthrow him. So that was uh, uh, Terah, Abraham's father, and Abraham, who was then called Abram, go, went to Ur, probably from the area of uh, Haran. And uh, there, the main deal that was happening was trade. But, uh, Ur needed a general too, Yahweh felt. Well, there's a picture of Ur, a reconstruction. It was a magnificent city in its day. This is in Iraq. And the, the rival of Yahweh, who, whose name was Marduk uh, in the ancient Akkadian accounts, uh, Christians tend to call him Satan, uh, and his son uh, was coming from Egypt at this point, uh, closing in on the spaceport that Yahweh had on the Sinai. And uh, Marduk's son Nabu, was, who had, had suborned the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and Zoar, the cities of Canaan, in which a lot of the uh, previous astronaut corps, the EGG, or Nephilim, had settled. And they were all, uh, both Marduk's and his son were then closing in on the spaceport that Yahweh and his son Utu ran on the Sinai Peninsula. And this uh, was a, coming to a critical head. Uh, Enlil sent his spy, and here's my ancestor again, Abraham. Uh, and he, and he, before he became a general, he was, a, he, besides being a general, he was a spy too. Uh, and uh, what Abraham uh, found was that in Sodom and the cities of Canaan were indeed in Nabu's uh, camp. Um, Yahweh actually sent his son, Ninurta, uh, as well as uh, his nephew, Nergal, uh, down to Sodom to check it out. And the people were so uh, angry at these um, so-called angels, the emissaries of Yahweh. He just would kill people, and they didn't understand why. Um, uh, uh, they tried to mob them, but uh, uh, Lot, Abraham's um, nephew, uh, was able to uh, hold them back, and they were able to report to Yahweh, hey, Sodom's gone over to, uh, to Marduk and his people. And so Enlil, the commander of, of the earth force of Nibirans, uh, the Anunnaki, um, communicated, uh, calmed with his dad, Anu, King Anu, uh, on the planet Nibiru. Uh, would he have permission to nuke the spaceport and Sodom, or Marduk was going to now be able to take the spaceport and mobilize uh, the humans he'd been training and come back and take over uh, Nibiru, to which he, Marduk, thought he was should be the king. And there was a treaty that said he was the king. Even. So Anu said when Enlo asked him, yeah, go ahead and nuke, nuke, nuke him. So in 2025 BCE, the Nibirans, the Anunnaki, did indeed nuke Sinai, and they nuked Sodom. They, they actually, uh, the Salt Sea, uh, just uh, above Sodom, so Sodom got washed out. All this is to stop Satan or Marduk. Full-on nuclear war. However, the nuclear storm from dropping the bombs on the uh, Sinai and Canaan made this great big radiation cloud, and the two clouds joined, and they blew all over um, 
Yahweh's place, blew all over Iraq and Kuwait, uh, and killed all the humans there. Of course, the Anunnaki saw them saw all this stuff coming, and they got the message to flee, and they jumped in their boats and planes and, and got the hell out of there, except for just one, one of them who stayed to help the humans who were all dying in the streets of Sumer uh, from radiation poisoning. Enlil, of course, uh, saved his general, and he had him get get out of there. And when they were clear, he ordered uh, the uh, men in Abraham's band to circumscribe to circumcise themselves, so that their uh, phalluses would look like that, those of an Anunnaki. Anunnaki lacked foreskins, and that way Yahweh could tell his earthlings from Marduk's earthlings. And uh, Enlil uh, did not like it that Abraham had a secondary wife who was Egyptian. Her name was Hagar. And uh, his old wife, uh, Abraham's old wife, Sarai, Sarah, um, uh, was, looked like she was past bearing and hadn't born any children. So um, uh, with her permission, whatever, he took Hagar, who was a princess of Egypt, as his uh, secondary wife, and he had a child called Ishmael, who uh, he raised to be the king of um, Canaan after, uh, after he passed. However, Yahweh Enlil said, I, I get rid of them, put them out in the desert. And that, that meant, then again, that meant they're going to die, put them out in the desert. But Abraham did it. But Abraham had another kid, this time with Sarah, probably by artificial insemination or some help with the Anunnaki. Um, they made, made her actually bear the second child, uh, and uh, even though she was 90 years old. Uh, and now this one, he'd already gotten rid of uh, Ishmael. Uh, he was raising Isaac, uh, an obedient, intelligent boy, uh, to uh, take over when he died. Abraham was then given the order by uh, Yahweh, kill this one, <laughs> kill Isaac. And, uh, you know, Abraham says, okay, boss. Well, uh, one of Abraham's uh, kids down the line, Jacob, um, and that was his name. He got in a fight with one of these emissaries of, of the Anunnaki, a, a, you know, a, a guy from Nibiru. Uh, who, these, they, the Nibirians were usually a lot stronger, but Jacob actually beat this uh, guy and uh, pinned him down and wouldn't release him unless he, uh, he got some kind of blessing. And the guy said, okay, I'll give you a blessing. Let me go. And I'll give you the name Israel which means you beat an Anunnaki. And that's how Jacob, direct descendant of Abraham, uh, son of Abraham, is going to uh, begat uh, the, uh, the Jews, ultimately. Jacob's son, uh, Joseph, is his younger son, um, was a dream, was a dream interpreter. He was really good at it, uh, and um, the old man really liked him. Uh, and uh, his older brothers uh, threw him down a well, kept him there until uh, slavers came by with their camels, and they, they sold him to go to Egypt. And they covered up that they, that's what they had done. And uh, so Joseph was taken off to Egypt. Uh, at the direct descendant of Abraham, and he is uh, a slave. He uh, is working for a guy whose wife comes on to him. And he said, no way, I ain't going to do this. And she, she said, she runs and says, this guy came on to me. He's trying to uh, seduce me. And so uh, they threw Joseph in jail. But he kept on reading dreams in jail. He became famous reading in dreams in jail. People came to the jail to visit him. And even after a while, the uh, emperor of Egypt, the pharaoh, heard about 
uh, Joseph because he'd been uh, the uh, Pharaoh had been having dreams and he wanted to have see what Joseph could do with those dreams. Joseph was famous even from the jail. And so Pharaoh told him, uh, uh, told Joseph his dream about uh, fat cows and lean cows and so forth. And uh, Joseph he said, clearly that means you're going to have seven good years and then seven bad years. That was pretty impressive. He probably had some information from Yahweh. Anyway, so uh, the uh, Pharaoh said, hey, Groovy, man, you're my man. I'm going to put you in charge of this place. And so uh, Joseph, uh, it was in charge and he had him uh, dig canals and store water and reservoirs and make uh, granaries. Uh, he really made sure for seven years that uh, Egypt was ready for this famine that Yahweh t told him was coming and which he told Pharaoh, you better watch out, it's a coming. So there's a map showing where these uh, granaries were. They were channeled off from the Nile into a place called the Fayum. You can see on the map where it is. And it became, uh, it's still a very, very green area. It's got canals and lakes and uh, Joseph did a, a good job. Ready for the famine that would come when there was a drought in Canaan. And that's indeed what happened. And the famine refugees, including uh, Israel or Jacob, uh, Joseph's father and his brothers were part of this refugee flood uh, in 1840 BCE uh, into Egypt from Canaan. But Joseph had a, had a big heart. He welcomed his dad, of course, but his big heart was shown when he actually uh, gave Bienvenidos welcome to the brothers who had actually sold him into slavery. Things went well for the uh, descendants of uh, Jacob, who was called Israel, and hence his descendants were called the Israelites. They did fine for, for many, uh, a long time, until there was a regime change in Egypt, and Marduk's allies, the Hyksos, and then some others that were uh, loyal to Marduk, or Satan, who was known as Ra in Egypt, and they basically took over Egypt. And now, instead of being the honored descendants of, uh, of, of Joseph, who had actually married into the Pharaoh's family, um, the Israelites, the descendants of, of Israel, Jacob, uh, were uh, seen as a fifth column by uh, Marduk and his uh, allies. And uh, they were oppressed. They were just, they were, they were treated as laborers. They uh, were... Uh, excluded from power as much as possible. Um, the, uh, of course, Joseph had married into uh, Egyptian royalty. And uh, when um, his daughters had a child uh, and they, it was supposed to be killed because no child descended from uh, Joseph in any way uh, under uh, Marduk was allowed to have any big uh, um, honor but uh, Joseph's mother managed to uh, get Hatsushep, who winds up being Pharaoh later on, uh, to raise the baby Moses in, in one account of what happened to Moses. But he was an Egyptian prince, and through his mother, he was a Jew. When he grew up to be a, 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 a young man, the prince absolutely could not stand the way uh, the overseers were treating the Israelites. And, you know, they were his relatives. And so he killed this one guy who was just, a, you know, he was, um, you know, doing a uh, George Floyd on, on uh, one of the Israelites and Moses killed him. And so uh, in the meantime, the, these astronomical uh, disturbances that uh, uh, Yahweh had told Joseph were coming with a, uh, some kind of uh, asteroid or something coming close uh, and disturbing. Uh, Pharaoh was about to go off uh, in Stromboli. Uh, and uh, 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 things were, the 
ground was growling and insects were being released and there was uh, 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 and poisons and toxins in the undisturbed soil were being released and uh, cows were dying uh, and uh, you know uh, Moses said to, to uh, Pharaoh hey you better let us go uh, he, he had been out uh, you know banished for killing the uh, overseer but then he'd been allowed to come back and now he say, uh, he goes to the Pharaoh and says, hey, look, I'm, I'm half these people. Let me, let, let me and them go. Uh, and uh, uh, things kept getting worse and worse. And, okay, go, get the hell out of here. Uh, but it wasn't just the Israelites, the descendants of uh, Jacob that came. It was all the Egyptians. Uh, bunk, the buildings were crumbling. The, the, the uh, oldest boys that slept on the first floor uh, this was their custom. They weren't warned. When, when all the toxins were released from the gr uh, ground, they died. The Israeli uh, boys had been ordered by Yahweh to sleep upstairs that night, so they didn't get killed. Anyway, it's, uh, it's, uh, they, got, they got out of there. They knew a route, how to get through, uh, the different kinds of waters that was flowing up and down the Nile and its tributaries back and forth. It's the same flood that wiped out um, uh, Crete and uh, sunk the Minoan uh, uh, fleet in uh, Kenosis. So uh, as uh, Moses' mob fled and everywhere they went, they conquered. They murdered everybody in their way. And whenever they were having a hard time, they had techno uh, weapons. Uh, in this picture, it comes a little bit later after Moses was dead. But uh, um, Yahweh evidently told uh, the um, uh, uh, Joshua and his people how to use the sonar technology to crumble the walls of Jericho, where they killed everybody and all the dogs and cats too, and they even killed their own uh, people who picked up a, a gold bauble or two instead of giving it all to Yahweh. But anyway, they were uh, ravaging through Canaan. These are the descendants of Abraham, via uh, uh, Joseph, via Moses. They wandered through the Sinai, and Yahweh gave them direction at night with a, 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 a pillar of flame. In the day, he made a cloud formation, he led them through, and he fed them manna from the sky. Uh, Probably, probably concentrated food, maybe had a little uh, monoatomic gold in them to give them uh, uh, lots of power. He wandered all around. Moses took this mob of conquerors, killing and burning and <coughs> conquering uh, for 40 years. And here's a map showing where all uh, the scientists have been able to re retrace the step of Moses and his mob. And of course, he kept gathering allies and wiping out enemies as he went. Finally, they get to uh, a place where uh, Moses uh, is ordered up a mountain by Yahweh. Uh, Yahweh gives him these tablets and tells him what to do. The first thing to do is uh, tell everybody, make everybody. Um, only uh, worship me and not any of the other gods. There aren't any other gods, it's only me. So tell the other gods you're not worshiping them anymore. And subjugate uh, women was one of his big moves. Well, you know the Ten Commandments, everybody knows the Ten Commandments. Um, but the Ten Commandments got added on to, there's, till there's hundreds and hundreds of commandments. But anyway, Moses never uh, lived to, to get all the way to the, um, the place where uh, the Anunnaki had stored the, their major computer systems that was run by Adad uh, in uh, the area of modern Jerusalem. So then Joshua uh, takes over from Moses, crosses the Jordan, uh, and takes with his armies the rest of Canaan. And so now we're coming up to uh, 1397 BCE with Joshua now leading the Israelites. And the armies are uh, wiping everybody before them with a little help uh, from Yahweh. Uh, King David um, 
defeated the Philistines, who, uh, of course, were uh, their champion was one of the uh, Ejiji, one of the great big uh, Anunnaki. The Anunnaki were often very, very big. And uh, so he established the uh, kingdom of Judea. And uh, he arranged for his ally in a battle, uh, Uriah, the guy's name was Hittite, uh, to uh, get exposed on purpose. So he'd get killed. And, and, and then he married the guy's wife because he, he saw her bathing and turned on to her. So uh, Yahweh was not pleased uh, with uh, David's behavior and uh, did, would not let him build the temple, even though that's what uh, Yahweh wanted was a temple. So he led Solomon, uh, David's uh, kid, uh, be the uh, guy who supervised the building of the temple. Well, Solomon uh, uh, practiced peace. He was the total opposite of uh, David. He built things, he traded, he was diplomatic, he was intelligent, he was a, a gentleman. In 931 BCE, Abraham's descendants through Isaac split the empire of uh, 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 that was following uh, Yahweh into two, Israel and Judea, governed separately. Nebuchadnezzar in 587 BCE actually captured Jerusalem. He took the Israeli Israelite leaders to Babylon. These are the guys that are going to write the Bible, so that's a really important event. That's when they got to uh, Babylon, and some of them were stationed in Haran. Uh, they worked on writing the Bible, and their task was to make it like, instead of all these gods, that the, which were just Anunnaki, big, big, uh, they're just lords from another planet with uh, high technology uh, and strength and, and psychic powers, but um, they were people. <laughs> and um, so uh, they were posing as gods already. And Yahweh said, nah, they ain't gods, I'm the only one. And so that's what the, the challenge was to make that uh, Yahweh, the God of not just Israel, but the only God, and to not make him so identified with one place that he could be everywhere. And so that was what the, the challenge of the Bible writers had, to take all this ancient literature that they now had access to uh, as uh, Nebuchadnezzar's guests and make some kind of cohesive uh, writing out of it. And that's the beginning of the Old Testament. So Yahweh becomes a Anunnaki composite. He lacks temple, he lacks territory. It was a major intellectual challenge, how to take all that stuff and, uh, and conflate all the Anunnaki into one personage. And they, they didn't disguise it very well. And we've been able to figure it out. In 539, uh, Cyrus, who had made a deal with Yahweh, uh, uh, conquered Babylon. And he sent the Israelites back to Jerusalem. Those who wanted were returned from Haran and from Babylon, and they came back uh, with their Bible to Jerusalem. After Alexander of Macedon conquered the world, and then he, he, died, he, was, he, he was poisoned, uh, he had already discovered that Marduk was his dad, but in any case, his uh, general, Ptolemy, wound up, you know, running things from Syria, that part of uh, Alexander's empire, and the Syrians ruled Jerusalem, uh, and they uh, were determined to put the Greek gods, who by now were representing Marduk, uh, uh, in place of Yah any worship of Yahweh. Well, uh, Matthias Maccabeus, uh, just could not tolerate that uh, Marduk and uh, this uh, satanic uh, 
regime of Greek gods, which are really Marduk and his, his uh, uh, the people that were working with him, uh, would rule the Jews who, were, who uh, Maccabeus thought were Yahweh's people. And he killed the, this priest and he, he touched off a, uh, a revolution. His uh, kids um, and the armies of the Jews uh, retook uh, the temple mound. They drove the, um, the Celestuids, that's the descendants of Ptolemy, and from, uh, that drove them back to uh, Syria, got them out of Israel. And for 80 years, under the Maccabees, Israel was independent. During the Roman period, again, we have the imposition of uh, people beholden to Marduk and his systems, who's now been established as uh, the, the god of Rome. In 70 BC, there's, uh, Jerusalem was in turmoil with a peace faction uh, led by Johann ben Zakkai, who said, look, it's futile for us to uh, stand up to Rome. Look what they've got. Let's just make some kind of accommodation. If they let us run our internal affairs, we'll just pay them bucks and have them leave us alone. Um, but the, uh, the ones that wanted, the zealots that wanted war, uh, started killing all the peaceniks. And um, ben Zakkai uh, was forced to pretend he was a corpse and be carried out of the city because they were taking corpses out of the city. Otherwise, they weren't letting the peaceniks go out of the city. They wanted them to stay and um, help fight against Rome. So he was a great peacenik. Well, of course, um, the Romans did indeed take Jerusalem and they burned Enlil's temple. The next event, and we'll have to hang on to this uh, for the next show, of course, of uh, huge importance and, uh, is the coming of Jesus, um, who was a rabbi, a wise man among the Jews. But that's what you're going to get in another story. Thanks so much for listening so much uh, to the beginning of this series on Abraham and his descendants, of which I am one. Thank you for listening. Here's some other books we wrote. And here's a book by my teacher in the middle, Zachariah Sitchin. I'm so glad you uh, are watching my slides. Thank you so much.